this was a heavy video to figure out how to film and initially when i filmed this i sat down and just spoke from my heart because i didn't exactly know which details i felt comfortable including versus not so my solution to the problem was let's just sit down and talk and if it feels right to say i'll say it and if it doesn't i won't which i think is great and that's what i did and that's what you're about to watch but i then shared that video with a couple loved ones that i very much trust their opinion of and they thought that it was a stream of consciousness and honest and emotional, but that I didn't really give a very good summary of the concrete things that happened. So I just wanted to begin this video saying that is what you are about to watch, which was me a few days ago, sitting down with no plan and just trying my best to put the last year, year and a half, two years of my life into words, which was a, a big task to do. But I am going to then end the video with me now trying to more concretely state some solidified things that we now know just for the sake of conclusion. So if you would like to watch my stream of consciousness, kind of more rambly, maybe confusing timeline, but very much from the heart video, feel free to watch that. That's the majority of this video, but otherwise I'm going to do my best to kind of reiterate and summarize some key points at the end and it would mean very much to me if you would watch that as well whether you watch that at the end or you just skip to it now i'm going to put a little timestamp. and um, here is me a few days ago trying my best this is a video that i knew i was going to do eventually but honestly had no idea when how the correct way to do it and the correct way to go about it but i feel like it has been placed on my heart to use the experience and my story of going through a divorce at a young age as an opportunity to help as many other girls as possible that might be in similar unhealthy situations and i feel like it was essential for me to eventually sit down and just be open and honest about how i got to that point i am very fully aware that i did plenty of things wrong in my marriage and so there was a level of fear that sitting down and explaining more of the details would open myself up to criticisms for all the things that I did wrong and maybe maybe I should have tried harder and I know that that's going to be part of it but I feel like I am at a place emotionally to where I'm okay with that. If it means even just helping one other girl do something better and healthier within her relationship or maybe get out of a situation that would lead them to where I was um, then I think it's worth it. So I feel like I have emotionally healed and moved on to the point to where I can hopefully put this into words without too much emotion and as logically as possible. I also feel like it's kind of the last piece of closure to where maybe we don't really have to talk about this much anymore. And also something that I was really looking for that I finally got was permission from my ex to share this story. And he's understanding and he thinks that it is my story to share, which was hugely healing for me to hear. So all that being said, I am ready to sit down and explain a little bit more of the situation I was in, how I got there, and take accountability for the things that I did wrong so that hopefully other girls will have a better outcome than I did. There are a couple things that I want to ask of you before we get into like the meat of this video. And the first thing is that you just listen to the next couple of things out of respect for me because there's a couple disclaimers and things I just want to clarify before I actually share the story. The next thing I want to ask of you is that you are respectful to my ex and to me honestly um we can't go back and we can't change the situation and i made mistakes he made mistakes he made hurtful decisions and i am of the belief that hurt people hurt people and though he definitely made decisions that hurt me i think that a lot of it stemmed from unfair trauma and experiences in his life and trying to hold him accountable or trying to uh share your thoughts isn't going to make things better i think that the number one way that we can kind of heal situations like this is approaching people with love and gentleness and kindness and so i just ask that you keep everyone's mental health in mind wherever you might comment about this situation whether it's like directly below or elsewhere on the internet um lastly i want you to keep in mind that this is my side of the story i have always been hyper aware of trying to represent stories factually which is another reason i didn't want to share yet i was still learning facts about my own divorce for months after the divorce so i try my best to remove myself from a situation and present facts but fact of the matter is as much as i can try this is still how i've perceived my life and it is my story but you're not getting the other side so i just want you to keep that in mind as well but on the reverse of that 
is something that my friends have actually called out in me is that that is such a fear of mine that a lot of times I don't represent myself very well when I'm explaining my own um, experiences because I will diminish my pain and I will make a lot of excuses for the other people around me and so I'm gonna try my best to not do that also just know I'm trying my best when I try to put this into words but um, this is how I've perceived the last little bit of my life and there's a whole nother story out there to be heard I think those are the main things that I wanted to just get out at the beginning yeah I think that's it so thank you for allowing me to share i will say one last thing i was worried that me sharing this would seem like clickbait or i was worried that me sharing this would seem like i am just like harping on my divorce too much but i brought those fears to the community within my facebook group and everyone said i think it would actually be healing and closure and help a lot of people so like i said even if this just helps one other girl I am ready and here we go. I don't have much to say about the start of our marriage except for the fact that it was okay. You know, it wasn't a great relationship, but it wasn't a bad relationship. It was just kind of like a coexisting relationship. I did not know maybe because I got married very young and didn't really date a lot. I, I did not know that it could be so much more fulfilling, but I think that we kind of just had like a friendship and we coexisted well. And honestly, for the first year of our marriage, we didn't see each other a lot. He had a day job. I had a night job working at restaurants and then weekends we would serve probably like 20 hours a weekend at our church and a lot of Saturdays he would play softball games. So we really did not get much quality time together, which isn't great, but I don't recommend doing that when you're newly wed. I recommend probably being intentional about spending time together, but it was right before COVID that we actually both decided to quit our jobs on the same day. And we are both self-employed still to this day so it was a big change going from never seeing each other to living under the same roof and working under the same roof and just kind of being around each other all the time and then COVID hit which i think expedited a lot of relationship aspects for a lot of people because you don't have those external distractions and also that community to like enhance and enrich your life it simultaneously feels like the things that happened towards the end of my marriage were out of nowhere and were a long time coming which is really weird. And I think it's because one thing that I did wrong, let's start with let's start with one of these, is being afraid of confrontational conversations of like really asking the other person what's going on, you know, because I'm afraid of confrontation. And I've gotten a lot better about that. But I will say probably about a year and a half into our marriage, I did start noticing some things that would bother me and I never said anything about them. And that is wrong. Um, part of his job, was interacting with people online, as is mine. And it was just a whole different world. It was in the sports world, not a world I really know anything about or care anything about. So I just let him do his thing and wouldn't really keep tabs, but would notice reoccurring people kind of popping up online. And it made me a little bit uncomfortable, but I trusted my husband. I was like, this is part of his job. He's doing his job. I'm not gonna say anything about it. So that went on for a while. And I just kind of noticed this like emotional distance growing very very slowly over time but it's one of those things that like day to day you might not notice a difference but if you look back you're like whoa i think we're worse off than we were not that long ago goodness how do i even summarize the next few months i had a lot going on in my personal life i had a lot of health struggles i had um some stress within work and i honestly just like on my own wasn't doing great wasn't doing well and didn't feel like I could go to my husband for like support in any way. And it was actually my husband that recommended to me like, I think you should maybe go be near your family because like, I can't help you. And I was like, okay. So started spending a little more time near my family in Texas. I think that there's probably three week long trips where I was like, I just need to be around someone that can kind of take care of me because I'm really not doing well. Um, later found out that when I was gone, there was other things happening, but we'll get to that. When I came back from one of the trips, we had a dinner. Something that had been happening that was hurtful to me is church was back. You know, this was towards the end of COVID restrictions in Los Angeles. And it used to be like a really big part of our life and our relationship. And I remember asking like, hey, it would mean so much to me if we could just go to church together. We don't have to serve. Like, I would just love to go 
to the 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Could you block off 10 to 11 for me in your calendar? And the response was always, I'm too busy with work. I have too much going on. But I would notice there was time for other things like golf with friends and trips and games and all this choice of things. So that was like the first thing that I was kind of hurt by that I actually vocalized is this is really important to me and like I would just love if you could spare an hour to do this with me for like the sake of our relationship. I felt a weird amount of shame being the wife that was going to church alone after being known as like the couple that would serve together. So that was kind of happening for a couple months leading up to when <clears throat> my health and everything got really bad and when I came back and we had that dinner I was like I'm gonna just kind of ease us into this conversation. And the first question I asked is like, how do you feel about God? And he told me, which I so respect, he's like, God and I don't talk anymore, which is absolutely a valid journey to take. And I was like, okay, let's dive into this. Like, I'm so glad we're finally talking about this. And I'm so sorry that we haven't talked about this for the last year that I've noticed this like distance. And that was like the first thing that kind of opened up honest conversation, which was great for us. But the conversation never really talked about the things that I was most fearful of because I didn't want to bring them up. So over the next couple months, we started talking about these core pillars that we built our marriage on that just kind of out of the blue shifted for him, which if these are true, I respect them completely. But for him, religion, church, God was no longer something he wanted to pursue, which is fine. And he told me kids is something no longer that he wanted to be on the table, which is fine. I respect that as well. And a change I had gone through is I was missing my family because I just felt so isolated and alone in Los Angeles. I felt like all the people that cared about me were in Texas. And so I was feeling like, I don't know if I want to live in California anymore, which for him was a non-negotiable. And so looking at these things, I was like, these are big things. There was other things that came up too, but like kids, religion, and where you want to live are three pretty big pillars that like someone's going to have to sacrifice on. You can coexist believing different things in terms of religion, but like you can't you can't find a compromise on kids it's either you have them or you don't and you can't find a compromise on where to live it's either you live here or you don't so i said i think it's really important that we like talk through these things and figure out like how to navigate this moving forward for the sake of our marriage and like let's do let's do counseling let's do therapy and he agreed wasn't super pumped about it but he agreed and all this time i still had these fears and i still noticed things happening online that were hurtful to me. And I guess I'll dive into that a little bit more right now because this is the thing that I am really ashamed of. I noticed little things happening a lot. Like he had an Apple watch and there was just one girl that I would notice whenever he was like driving or whatever and like couldn't see that I could see his watch it was always texting him. And that bothered me and I never said anything about it. And there was even just like public messages on Twitter between him and this one specific girl that I noticed and it bothered me and I never said anything about it. And there was a couple times where when he encouraged me to go home to Texas, he ended up spending time with this girl and I would only find out because I would see pictures of them tagged together and that bothered me and I still never said anything about it and I don't know how much I want to get into like the the things that were happening but this is how much gaslighting I was doing in my own brain things were happening to where like he would turn his location services off on his phone and he would deactivate the security cameras in my house and I would still justify all those actions as just chance I would be like, nope, the, there's nothing sketchy happening. This is just weird, it's coincidental, but there's nothing sketchy happening. And the only people I'd really talked to about it was my best friend and my therapist. And both of them were like, this is absolutely sketchy. And as a wife, it's your duty to say something about it. I just couldn't do it. I could not do it. I had such a fear of being wrong. I, I also had a fear of being right, honestly. So it was just easier never to say anything about it and to talk about the other issues in our marriage. I thought how absolutely crappy would it be for me to accuse him of something like this and it wasn't true. That would make me a terrible person. But the fact of the matter is I just felt gut feelings that I should have listened to. And there was a time when everything kind of exploded. And this was when I got COVID. I got COVID and so I stayed home alone and I worked. I was still trying to work and get everything done. And he didn't want to risk being around me. So he just got hotels, which is fine. Um, and at the same time, I 
also got gluten. I have celiac disease and I had um, several things happen with work, like big mishaps where I was like, I might, I might stop doing YouTube all at the same time. And I was just in a really, really, really dark place. Like uh, the first time in my life I felt so low. Like I didn't know it was possible to feel that way. And two weeks of isolation going through that and feeling those things was really hard. And the first weekend that I was out of quarantine, he had a trip planned to go and go to a Dodger game with his best friend. And I remember telling him that I was just kind of sad to like still not have time with him. And he went anyways, which is fine. I told him to, I didn't want to be a damper on his plans. And I was like, you're looking forward to spending time with one of your best guy friends. So I stayed home alone. Um, it was actually Kaylee's birthday weekend. I went to a birthday dinner for her and it was at her birthday dinner that I saw on Twitter him tagged with that same girl. And I confronted him and said, I'm just really hurt that I thought this was a guy's thing, which is why I wasn't invited. And it's not a guy's thing. And I wasn't invited. And this was like the lowest I've been in my life. And this is the first time that I've like asked you to be here for me. And, and that was really, really hurtful. And it was the same girl that I had the bad gut instincts and still couldn't bring up. I feel like I'm kind of jumping all over the place in my timeline here, but something that I did so poorly and incorrectly is yes, I'm glad that I encouraged us to go to therapy together. So I was in my own therapy, he was in his own therapy, and then we were doing couples therapy together. And then on top of that, I called in the couple that was our premarital counselors to kind of come and do like almost an intervention of sorts, like ask us the hard questions. And still through all of that, I could not, I could not bring up my fears about this girl. I couldn't do it. I was like, let's focus on our core pillar issues about kids and religion and where we're gonna live. And I now have some clarity that maybe these core pillar changes within him was an effort to get out of the marriage. And see, this is where this is my perception. This is not fact. I cannot factually prove this, but I do know in his past relationships, he um, didn't want to be the one to like call it, end it. So I think it was maybe easier to say like, oh, these things are too big for us to work around. Maybe we're just not compatible anymore. In all of our therapy together, we would just talk about those things. And I could not bring up the biggest issue that was really on my heart. And my individual therapist was like, Mikal, you need to talk about this. And I was just so afraid to talk about this. And a couple things happened before we officially made the call. Um, and a lot of things happened after we officially made the call. I remember our therapist, both of us, he was a Christian counselor and he was like, I just need you guys to know, like, I'm gonna be biased here. I'm always gonna be on the side of marriage and I'm never gonna tell you that like this isn't gonna work. And after weeks of meeting with him, I remember one day he just kind of like sat there and we, Brooke and I talked about it afterward and we were like, I think I, I think we broke the therapist. Like, I think he's like, I can't tell them that this isn't gonna work, but like, I really don't know how to make this work. And he didn't even know he didn't even know the majority of it. He just knew the core pillar things. I wanted to talk, you know, I wanted to talk it through. I wanted to figure out what we should do. And there is one situation that was a big turning point for me that not many people know about. I think three people know about this. My parents don't even know about this because frankly, I didn't want to, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I feel ashamed that I allowed myself to get into this situation and that I allowed this to happen. Um, and though it's not my fault, I can't help but kind of feel like it is sometimes. But there was a moment um, throughout all of this, still hadn't vocalized anything about my fears about the other girl, only about the other stuff where he didn't want to talk to me. And I was like, we can't just keep not talking. Like we have to figure this out. And I went and I followed him into the garage and I sat on the floor and I was like, we need to talk. And he exploded, um, got very angry and was holding a hammer. And he threw this hammer as hard as he could in my direction and just started screaming. And I really truly don't think his intention was to hit me, but this was the first time where I realized like, I don't even feel physically safe in my marriage. I didn't feel emotionally safe or protected or cared for, but this is a turning point to where I don't know this man anymore. And I like that could have killed me if he aimed a foot to the left. He played baseball his whole life. He's got quite the arm. And I, it was the only time in my life I ever had a panic attack. I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 
But that for me was a huge shift because I was like, feeling emo emotionally unsafe is something that I can deal with and work through. I'm not saying that you should, but that was my thought at the time. But feeling physically unsafe is a whole nother level and I don't want to feel this way. And that was honestly weeks before the end. Um, I went back to Texas again to give us space to talk about things and figure things out. And we were doing therapy um, over Zoom and we were still keeping in contact. And I remember asking like, like, do you think this will work? Like, do you want to work on this? And the response was always, I don't really see the point. Like, I don't know what to do here. And so I finally had to tell him, I am going to start listening to what you're actually saying, which is not yes. You're not saying yes. You're not saying no, but you're not saying yes. And if you need me to be the one to call out the fact that that's not a yes, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being the bad guy who says this sounds like no, no, you don't want to work on this. No, this isn't going to work. And that was a text conversation. And in my mind, that was kind of the moment that we called that, which feels really shitty. It feels like my fault. Like, I feel like I had to make that call. People around me have told me that I was just kind of like maneuvered into that situation. But I do feel like like maybe maybe I made that call. I didn't choose the circumstances and I didn't choose how I was being treated. But I did choose to say, sounds like this is a no, you know? So um, went back, packed up the house within a week, still worked. It was the weirdest week of my life. And I drove away. And I will share some of the things that happened after driving away because that's when I started to actually get clarity on the things that I never voiced. I'll share a little bit about the day I left, but otherwise months after that was just me finding out small little pieces of information to confirm my fears that I was too afraid to voice in my marriage. But the day I left obviously was a really hard day. I mean, I was driving away from my whole life. Um, and more than anything, I was worried about him and his mental health. So I would check in on him throughout the day. And he said that he was worried about like waking up the next morning alone. Like that sounded hard, which absolutely that sounds so hard. And so I asked him, I was like, could I maybe get you a hotel room or something? So you don't have to at least wake up in our house. You could, you could wake up somewhere new. Also, I got distracted because the video that I put out was at this point my announcing my divorce nothing was confirmed as to the things that i was truly fearful about all i knew at that point was we had really core differences i was afraid honestly for my safety a little bit and therapy didn't seem to help and he didn't seem to want to really work on it and so that's where i was when i filmed my initial announcement which is why things have changed so much since then because now let's fast forward to the day I'm leaving offered to get him a hotel and he said no it's okay and so I was I was genuinely worried about him and was like pulling over at gas stations checking in on him and asking him like what are you gonna do tonight and he was like I think I'm gonna go to this brewery in Eagle Rock which is like really close to us and I was like oh that sounds great and then later I was like how's the brewery he was like oh it was okay and then that night I was like, how, how is it being alone in the house? He was like, oh, it's sad and it's cold and it's lonely and all these things. And um, I was just feeling so distraught and like sad on his behalf, like, cause I care, I care for him, obviously. And it wasn't until the next day that I had this weird gut instinct that I should check our shared bank account. Cause I was still on the bank account. I mean, I had left the day before and I saw charges on the bank account from up in Fresno, which is pretty far away from where we live. Um, there was a charge like 20 minutes after I left at a gas station headed north and charges that night at a brewery and that's where the girl that I was really fearful about lived um, and then it hit me I was like oh my gosh I have like I am being blatantly lied to he is with her right now and he left 20 minutes after I did and actually I confronted him about that too which I'm proud of myself because that did bring me some closure and he was like yeah um, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to spiral, but still didn't admit to being like within a relationship or anything more than that. Um, so that was like the first piece of clarity to me for like my gut fears were true and shame on me for not voicing them. I specifically remember having a conversation with him before our marriage ended and I told him, I said, there's one thing that I would ask of you if you wanted to save this marriage that I'm honestly too ashamed to ask. And that thing would have been, let me see your phone and stop talking to this girl. But I think he knew what I was going to say and didn't want to talk about it. So I still never even voiced it in that moment. So the next 
few months, I was just hungry for knowledge and hungry for closure and would check things online that I knew was gonna hurt me because I never got the full truth. I never got the full answer. And I think it's so weird that the reason for our divorce <clears throat> wasn't the reason for our divorce, but it was the reason for our divorce. Does that make any sense? Like there was surface level reasons that we felt okay discussing, but the core reason of it all was too scary to talk about. And that feels wrong to me. Like I feel ashamed for that. It's my, I know it's not. I want to preface this with, if you're in a situation, it's not your fault, but I'm just telling you how I felt in case it makes you feel validated in your feelings. I felt ashamed that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't enough to fulfill a person, that he had to go find something else somewhere else. Um, and looking back, like I was hurt that there was no emotional intimacy and there was no physical intimacy. And one of the most vulnerable things I ever had to do was ask for physical intimacy. And like, that is shameful for me because it's like, what am I, am I not good enough? You know, like, God, that hurts. That hurts to think about. Um, also I can't help but feel the guilt of like, I made a vow to this person and at what point do I just insist? Do I say, I don't care like what I want or what you want, like we made this promise and I insist we work through this. At what point is that unhealthy? At what point should I have done that? I don't know, I don't have the answers for you. I don't have the answers. Here's where I'm gonna do my best to summarize succinctly the key points of what happened. And I do think it's important to note that I now have confirmation that there was infidelity and unfaithfulness within my marriage. And I am thankful that I was given the gift from my ex of that confirmation so that I can rest in the fact that that is a fact, if that makes sense. And that began a year to a year and a half before the end of our marriage. And having him own up to that makes me feel so much more confident telling my story. And I just feel the need to succinctly say that it has been proven that there was unfaithfulness in my marriage. I also, think it is important to note that though I give people so much of the benefit of the doubt and I try to take on as much responsibility as I can, I do think that there was a level of manipulation into having me feel more responsible for a lot of things than maybe I should have been responsible for in terms of making hard calls and initiating hard conversations. Um, and I think that that was very much present within the dynamic of my marriage to where I was made to feel like more of it was my fault than it actually was. Though I do still want to take accountability um, for as much as I possibly can. Lastly, I think it's important to share that the hammer story that I shared in this video is something that I just don't wanna talk about. It's something I don't feel comfortable talking about because I do feel embarrassed that I picked a life partner that would be capable of making me feel physically unsafe, but it is just a huge reality and I know more common than a lot of us would like to admit. And for me, that was a really big turning point in realizing the severity of the situation was more than I initially admitted to myself because I never really admitted to myself that I didn't feel safe until that moment. So that was a big turning point for me as well. So those are a few things that I would just like to summarize distinctly that maybe I kind of beat around the bush a little bit in my initial attempt at trying to put this into words because I do try to tread so gently with these like heavier and scarier topics of conversation but the fact of the matter is he did cheat I did feel physically unsafe and there's probably a a level of manipulation or gaslighting that happened within my relationship that messed with my perception of reality and messed with what I felt responsible for when the situation was more out of my control than I would like to admit at the time. I think it was a lot easier for me to believe there's a lot of gray area in those facts because it doesn't feel so heavy, but this is me coming back a little bit later after the fact, watching it back saying, I need to be honest and clear about what the situation was and not lean into the gray area so much because they are very serious matters. Cheating on a spouse is a serious matter and aggression and physical unsafety is a serious matter and manipulation and all of that is a serious matter. And these are things that exist in relationships a lot. So me calling it what it is, I think is going to help bring clarity to the situation and maybe help someone else see clarity in their own situation that they might be in as well. So that is what I'm doing now. Those are the things that I just wanted to make very clear that I maybe didn't do the best job of making clear when I was in a more emotional, scatterbrained state in the initial filming of this video. So thank you for allowing me to pop in and just solidify that a little bit more. And um, thank you for watching this part of the video. I appreciate it.
I guess I don't really have a ton of like heartfelt redeeming things to tell you about the situation other than that it was hard, but I also feel a lot of closure and I am at a spot to where I'm so thankful it happened and I'm not hurt by his relationship and I'm not gonna talk about him presently. I, I told him to, I was like, I, I promise that I will only talk about our marriage and yes, the unfaithfulness in our marriage there, but after our marriage ended, like I, I won't go into detail about that because at that point, that's your life. We had already made the call. Um, but even so, those things hurt me, but now I do feel much less hurt. Like I don't feel the need and the desire to seek out um, additional information for clarity because I feel like I've had the clarity. And I shared in a vlog that he had uh, accountability in his actions, which was very healing for me because I have that habit of just like gaslighting myself into believing things aren't true. So hearing from the person that they were true was gave me a lot more confidence to listen to my gut moving forward. But the biggest lessons that I learned, though like I said, I don't have that many that I can like eloquently put into words here. I've done a lot of lesson learning in my vlogs, but is have the hard conversations, trust your gut. And if you feel like something sketchy is happening, like talk about it. You might, you might be right. And it's your right to know. Um, and I hope I'll have the courage to do that in my future relationships. And I feel very disappointed in myself that I didn't. Like, I feel like, a, I feel like a failure that I didn't, um, honestly. And that's on me. The circumstances are not my fault, but the way I handled them are. And my fear is very much a recurring theme and an issue and my um, people pleasing tendencies and my um, lack of confrontational abilities are all things that got me to where I was, which is why those are recurring themes and things that I'm working on moving forward because I don't want to get to that point again. I feel like this was an absolute jumble mess of a video because I, I didn't fully decide on the things I wanted to share or not. I just said I'm going to sit down and speak from my heart and if something feels right to say, I'm going to say it and if it doesn't, I'm not. So like I said, please continue to be mindful that that is the gist of it, but that's still a small fraction of a percentage of all the things that had happened and all the conversations and all the hurtful moments um, and all the things that I did wrong too. Um, but it feels good to sit down and just like share a little bit more of the full picture. And I want to reiterate one last time that this is me sharing how I got to where I got and maybe like the warning signs or the situation will resonate with someone and maybe hopefully save them some pain. But I don't want you to make the situation worse because I feel like I have pretty much moved on. I'm like, Talking about some things is still hard to talk about, but like emotionally I've healed and I feel removed from the situation and we don't need to open healed wounds. You know what I mean? We can talk about them. We can say, this is how I got the scar, but we don't have to cut it open. And so I ask for you to just be mindful of that for him and for me. And I hope that this will help someone out there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here and um, doing life with me. Truly, thank you for doing life with me. Life is, <laughs> life's a lot that it feels a lot better to do it with people that I feel like are on my corner and welcome me with like non-judgmental open arms. So I love you. Thank you for being here. I'll see you guys in a video very soon.